Like one important element of the sales part of the funnel is your personal story. Mm. Because one thing that's really important is building a relationship with the artist, right? right. I feel like that kind of got lost over the past 10 years. Like so many producers just put their product online, people buy it. There's no like personal connection ever, right. right? They never talk to each other. So if you actually put yourself out there, you tell your story, maybe record a little video, like explain where you're coming from, explain why you're putting together this offer, explain like who you want to work with, you know, stuff like that. Then you're building a really powerful relationship. And that's something that's definitely going to, you know, end up converting much better than just having a store, right? Mm -hmm. Where nobody knows nothing about you. So mm -hmm. it's just like a good faith thing. Like I click on this thing, hopefully the guy will send me the beat. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, play around with your story, play around with your offer too. So if your offer right now is like, oh, I'm going to give artists 10 beats for 30 bucks or something like that, maybe try out like uh, 15 beats for 30 bucks or do 10 beats plus a bonus of, of five beats from this other producer that I work with or something like that. And then just keep testing those things until something hits, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel you on that, uh, what you were saying about the whole connection th uh, being lost. Because uh, I feel like a lot of producers kind of feel like they need to kind of be that cool guy. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, I'm not going to hop in front of the camera and be Tony Robbins and be, <laughs> you know, be Mr. Friendly trying to, you know, hey, man, my name is Dylan. You know what I mean? I'm uh, from Rochester, New York. I've been making beats, man, and I really want to help you out. But uh, but like you said, that's that's pretty important. How, how would a... Uh, how, how do you think a producer, where should they start, you know, as far as like telling their story and stuff like that? I mean, the first step is really figuring out your customer avatar, which is like, make it super specific. Like, this is the guy literally that I'm selling to. So, I don't know, give him a name. Like, this is Richard, you know, he's from, I don't know, West Virginia. He's like 21 years old. He's college educated. He used to listen to Wu-Tang Clan. Now he's more into trap music, mm -hmm. something like that. And then every single time that you are telling your story or your marketing or something like that, just picture that guy and pretend like you're talking to him. Mm. And then once you're telling him your story, you want to relate it to his story. So you want to be like, you know, listen, you're probably the kind of guy who used to listen to Wu-Tang or whatever. And that's what got me started. And I really want to bring that sound back. That's what I'm into. So, uh, you know, I'm looking for artists to work with and like make this thing happen. So if that is your target guy, then guess mm -hmm. what? Like every guy just like Richard is going to want to buy from you because he feels like he's personally being spoken to. Mm. Now with that, that starts, one thing you spoke about a lot was building a community and building a movement behind your brand. Well, how does that play into the whole branding aspect of things? It's telling your story. Mm -hmm. How does that like play into like building a movement and building community rather than just a store? Yeah. So it's kind of like the first step, right? Like uh, figuring out who you're talking to. And then once you've found your audience, you just start speaking to that audience like everywhere on Instagram, on email, whenever you're communicating. And that just builds like a tribe of loyal followers, mm. right? The kind of people who don't just buy from you one time, but the kind of people who come back like again and again and again, mm. who eventually want you to do their album, who eventually want you to coordinate their show, who want you to do all this stuff, right? Instead of just being like a one-time transaction. Right. Mm. So at that point, it becomes like a whole movement, right? And um, once you really figure out like your language, the way you talk to your audience and stuff like that, and you start really embracing that, building your tribe, then, you know, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. And then what, so, you know, now that you, you know, you're really working close with um, producers, you know, uh, personally kind of teaching them and stuff like that, what are some common mistakes that you see them making with this uh, funnel process? I think we already kind of touched on like some of the big ones, uh, you know, forgetting the email part, not setting up like the back end of their system and just jumping straight ahead into like paid advertising or something like that. I think a lot of producers just, just as anyone, to be honest with you, is just like impatient. Mm -hmm. You know, they've probably spent like years grinding and like not getting results. So now like you tell them like, oh, there's this thing that's going to work for you, but they want to jump straight from like step one to step five. Mm -hmm. right? But just trust the process, you know, do all the background work, get organized, and then you should be golden. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the producers that are like, you know what, I'm not, I don't have any uh, placements like Anno Domini and Gabe. I can't name drop um, Kendrick Lamar and Snoop Dogg and Wu-Tang and stuff like that. Um, how, how important of a factor is that, you know, when it comes to, you know, the, the storytelling part? I mean, it helps having that kind of like a validation of having like, you know, platinum plaques of having, you know, people, you know, big artists that you can name drop. But at the end of the day, like, it doesn't matter too much. What's more powerful is like finding your right avatar and then like speaking to them personally. You can even make it part of your story, you know, like, just like you, I'm, I started independently um, I, I was pl chasing placements for years, didn't really work out for me. Now my, what inspires me is like to work with independent artists. Mm. So that's why I want to work with you. Mm. So that's something that could resonate with, you know, a specific person, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily need to be like, oh, this be like industry hotshot or something like that mm -hmm. for people to want to work with you. Mm. Right. So, mm. 
So how how important how important is it for a producer to have like a lot of followers on Instagram and stuff like that? Not at all. Doesn't matter. Because remember, we're getting like a much higher conversion, right? Mm -hmm. So if we send like the same amount of people to our funnel and 10 times as many are buying, so if you have 10 times fewer followers, it doesn't right. matter, right? right? You're still crushing that guy. Plus you're collecting their emails so you can build a relationship long-term. Mm -hmm. So what's the, what's, why do you think so many producers think they need to be lit on Instagram? You know, they need to, you know what I mean, get, be getting over a thousand likes and stuff like that. It's what, like vanity what? metrics, right? It's like people see these successful producers with like a hundred thousand followers and they're like, oh, you know, if I had a hundred thousand, I've made it, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? And they don't really understand like the followers is just like a number. It doesn't really do anything for you unless you're right. connecting with the audience, right. you know? Right. Mm. Yeah, because it just seems like that. Producers think that's the main thing to focus on. Yeah, no, forget that stuff. Right. No. Mm -hmm. And what about for like the overseas guys, the overseas guys that may, and they may not say 100K is their goal, but they say, if I was in America, it would be different. Dude, I came from a tiny town in Germany <laughs> and now I'm here in LA. Mm. So it doesn't really matter where you're at, you know, as long as like, we like, we live in this like unprecedented time where through the internet, you can connect with like anyone in the entire world, right? Mm. So it doesn't matter where you're at right now. All that matters is where you're going, what your plan is, like what your strategy is. And, you know, you can do pretty much anything you want. Mm. Mm. 